what's up guys and welcome back to another video in the old studio. Today we're talking about monitors and in particular this is a monitors buying guide. If you're in the market for a new monitor or you're just interested in which are the best monitors available today at a certain price then hopefully you've come to the right place. It's been quite a while since I've done a video like that and since there has been loads and loads of new monitors that I've had the pleasure of testing, reviewing and this is hopefully going to tell you which ones you should go for and maybe which ones you shouldn't. And so then, to get us started, let's take a look at the budget end of the market. And this is actually the most recent monitor I've been testing, it's currently in the other studio, and this is the LG MP68. And this is a monitor that comes in 21 and 23 inch form factors, so it's not the largest monitor out there, but it is 1080p, everything is nice and sharp. But more importantly, it's got an IPS panel, and this means that you're going to get wider viewing angles and richer colours that are more true to life. It's the difference between you using a smartphone from around about six years ago that's a bit cheap and a bit washed out, and when you move the screen around uh, that you get a lot of colour shift. On IPS monitors you really don't get that, but at the budget end of the market you can get quite a few TN based monitors, and unless you're going for a gaming monitor, a TN panel is something that you do want to avoid. So if you are looking at a monitor, try and get one that has an IPS panel. But this one is available at a very good price, it's just uh, around about £110 at the time of filming in the UK market, but more importantly it's also got a 75Hz refresh rate as soon as you enable the FreeSync technology that's built into the monitor. FreeSync technology is going to mean that if you're going to want to use this for games, then you are going to get less stutter and less tearing in your game. Hopefully the full review of this monitor should be coming very very soon and as soon as that is it will be in the top right hand corner of this video along with all the other monitors that have been featured in this video. Now, while I'm very impressed with that LG monitor, there are definitely people out there that while they will appreciate the colour accuracy an IPS panel gives you, they'd rather have something that was more responsive even if it does mean a trade off in colour accuracy. And that is where the TN panel based G2460PF comes into play by AOC. Now this monitor has FreeSync technology as well, so you're still going to get uh, reduced stutter and tearing in your games provided you have an AMD graphics card rather than an Nvidia one. But this is a 144Hz 1080p panel that has a TN panel and it also uses a refresh rate of 1 millisecond. Those things combined mean that while you don't get the colour accuracy or the viewing angles of an IPS panel, you do get a monitor that is really responsive and bearing in mind it's available at a very very good price, gamers that want the smoothest possible experience don't have to spend much, especially if they're not really that interested in having rich and vibrant colours that will only be found on something like an IPS or a VA panel. It is also worth noting though that if you have a Nvidia card, there is a G-Sync version of this monitor available. And while this does provide a butter smooth experience, there is no doubt about that, that in theory should be slightly better than the FreeSync version if you have a compatible Nvidia card. You're paying £100 for this technology, I would probably recommend saving that, putting it towards something like a gaming peripheral, maybe a better graphics card, better processor, as while it definitely does make a difference, I think that most graphics cards can pump out over 60Hz, 1080p anyway, and so you're not quite going to gain such a big difference in experience than if you were running a game at say 38 frames a second, um, and then you were really going to tap into that G-Sync technology. Definitely worth a consideration, I, it performed very well and I do recommend the G-Sync version, but the FreeSync version probably is the way to go if you are on a budget. Next up it's the mid range of the market and here it is a little bit more simple when it comes to buying a monitor as I really do think there is one monitor out there that represents brilliant value for money while still having all the features I would possibly want from a monitor and this is the Acer XF270HU. This is a FreeSync monitor, it's 1440p so it has a resolution of 2560 by 1440 but it's got FreeSync technology as well, so if you want to game on it, it's ideal, but it has a 144Hz refresh rate as well. So you've pretty much got everything you want from a monitor. But the real advantage this has is that it's available for just under £400, whereas if you want the G-Sync version of this, you're looking at around about 550 That's a huge difference, and once again, it begs the question whether G-Sync technology is really worth that much of a premium. So if you go down the AMD route, or you're just maybe open to not using uh, FreeSync or G-Sync, then this is a brilliant monitor for general users, gamers, productivity, all of those things. It really is a truly fantastic monitor. 
If you're not so interested in having a high refresh rate though, or you're just interested in using something that maybe looks a little bit better on your desk, because that Acer definitely has quite a bland design, then maybe you should be looking at this one from AOC. It's got a very long, horrible model name, but it's a very recent monitor that I reviewed a few months back. And this, while it doesn't have adjustments and sadly doesn't have a visa mount, it does look very good on your desk and it has truly fantastic image quality that will go well with any PC, Mac, or whatever you want to do with it. It's got you covered. It's 1440p, and yes, it's only 60 hertz and it doesn't have FreeSync or G-Sync, but it's available at a very good price. Now next up, it's the high end of the market. And this is definitely where you'll find some of the most interesting monitors available on the market today. Now my personal favourite for a general user would be the Philips BDM, what is it, it's the BDM3490UC. Really catchy, easy to remember name, but what it definitely does have going for it is a super sleek design, brilliant image quality, it's got an IPS panel, it's got a resolution of 3440 by 1440 super slim bezels and speakers built into the stand that don't completely suck. Generally speaking, if you want to do some video editing, you want to do photo editing, you want to do a little bit of gaming, this really is a truly fantastic monitor. It doesn't have a super high refresh rate, it is only 60 hertz, though you can overclock this if you know what you're doing, I think I managed to get it to 75. And just generally speaking, it was a really nice monitor that I was really sad to see go when it left the studio. But once again, we find ourselves at a little bit of a crossroads, as if you do want to play games at the highest possible settings, but at the highest possible resolutions and the highest possible refresh rates, this monitor isn't necessarily the best choice, which is why if you are a diehard gamer with a fair amount of money to spend on a monitor, I'd probably point you more towards the direction of the Acer XB271HU. It's very similar to the FreeSync monitor that we mentioned from the mid-range section, but this has a much better design, NVIDIA G-Sync technology, and a refresh rate of 165Hz. And this means that you get a super smooth experience while retaining that colour accuracy and viewing angles that an IPS panel can give you. It's worth noting that there is an Asus alternative, the ROG Swift, but the problem with this is it's around about £100 more at the time of filming, and personally, you do get a slightly better design and build quality, but I'd probably rather save that money and just go for this that has more or less an identical panel. It's worth noting that this monitor does suffer from a little bit of backlight bleed and IPS glow, and you're going to have to get a good sample uh, to truly get the best possible experience. I know there has been definitely a, uh, a little bit of trouble with people RMAing monitors like this, as they do have a few defects in certain models. But assuming you can get a good one, and assuming of course the place you buy it from has a decent return policy, uh, you will be very happy indeed. Now next up it's the penultimate category, and this is the best 4K monitor. I'm still not entirely convinced that 4K is the best choice for a lot of people. Yes, if you watch a lot of 4K videos, it's fantastic. If you make 4K videos, or if you do photography, it's a fantastic thing to have in your arsenal. But for gamers and for the general user that maybe uses, uses a specific application, you might find you're going to run into scaling issues, and obviously you're paying through the nose for a 4K monitor, although prices are currently coming down and down. My favourite one so far, if you're a gamer though, and even just if you're a general user, is this one, and it's actually an Acer Predator, it is the XB321HU, or something very similar, it's so hard to remember all these model names, I tell you. And this is a 60Hz 4K monitor, and while it doesn't have HDMI 2.0, so you can't really plug in an Xbox and play games in 4K, if you have a PC with a DisplayPort input, you can get some truly fantastic imagery, as the panel is super sharp, it's 32 inches, which is my personal favourite for 4K monitors, I find that 27 or 28 inch monitors are a little bit too small for my liking and it's just a fantastic monitor to use as you have so much screen real estate as long as you've got a large enough desk uh, for things like civilization, for things like watching 4K video, editing 4K video it is a lovely lovely monitor but of course it's very expensive and if you don't play games then I did have another suggestion as well which I've tested which is from AOC this is the AOC 3277PQU another catchy, catchy name um, although I've noticed that just as I sat down to film this, it's currently unavailable in a lot of places. This sacrificed a truly fantastic design for one that's very mediocre, but the panel itself is really, really nice, and it's available at a cheaper price than this Acer. And so then, it's time for the final category, the best monitor, money no object. 
And while there are definitely a few rogue ones out there at the moment that I haven't tested, things like Dale's OLED monitor that realistically no one has the money to buy, and then the upcoming, I'll say the upcoming, it's now released, LG's 38 inch absolute beast of an ultra wide monitor. The two that I've actually used that I can actually say are truly fantastic are Asus's uh, PG348Q and then the Acer X34. Both of these share a resolution of 3440 by 1440, IPS, curved, G-Sync, and a refresh rate of 100 hertz. My personal favorite though is actually the Asus version as it has a nicer design in my opinion and it just has a nicer OSD that's just a little bit easier to use but pretty much they're very neck and neck. Both of them offer an ultra wide display that can really really deliver when it comes to gaming performance as everything is super smooth but you have pretty much no compromise at all as the IPS panel delivers wide viewing angles, really rich colors and you have so much screen real estate to work with and it truly envelopes your vision. It's by far the best two monitors really that I have ever used. But if I was going to buy one of them, it would go. I would go uh, for the Asus. But both of them are really expensive, and I definitely don't have the money to do that at the moment. And I probably won't ever, unfortunately, sadly, actually have the monitor to buy one for myself. But assuming you do, both of them, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. And so then, that's the end of this monitor buying guide. You can find all of the links in the uh, top right hand corner if you want to go and actually see the reviews. I'll leave all the links of the products down below so you can actually go and check them out. If you like this video, please like it. If you haven't, dislike it. Subscribe for more monitor reviews and to see the review of this Acer Predator that will come in the next few days. Thanks to everyone that has supplied review samples throughout the year for these things. Um, they always go back, sadly, pretty much, um, so I never actually get to keep them. But I guess that's just uh, part of the job, really. I can't really complain. Leave any comments you have down below. Let me know what your favourite monitors are. And like I say, subscribe for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and thanks to Corsair for sponsoring the channel, as always. I'll see you in the next video. Now, next up, it's the mid-range. And this is actually probably where my favourite monitor that's currently available... Musical instrument digital interface is not at all. Sorry? That wasn't even rigged. I have no idea what you're on about, Alexa. No! Don't listen to... Alexa, stop.